This week on the show, we interview legendary cannabis activist, entertainer, and all-around awesome guy, Tommy Chong. We complain about the media. Wait, aren't we part of the media? Why are we doing that? Oh, well. Uh, and we share our favorite and least favorite things of the week. My name's Tim Stromble. Welcome to Rooted. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are. And don't forget to check out our social accounts at Stay Rooted across the board. So simple, so easy, you can't miss us. And if you have feedback on the show, do us a favor, take out a piece of paper, write your complaint out by hand like people used to. Fold it up, throw it in an envelope, and mail it out to Rooted TV. Oh, you don't know the address? Well, then do us a favor, just cut out the middleman and throw your letter in the trash. Because that's what we do when we get feedback anyways. We really don't care if we don't read it. We just kind of do our own thing. Okay, save your time. Okay, so we have a very special show for you this week as we recently had a chance to visit with entertainment legend, cannabis industry legend, and the overall awesome dude that is Tommy Chung out at his beautiful house in Los Angeles. Tommy was awesome, by the way. Tommy's probably best known for being half of the iconic Cheech and Chong duo that revolutionized cannabis culture back in the 70s and 80s, but his body of work includes a ton of other projects. Just Wikipedia, Tommy Chong, and you'll find it. Uh, and his impact on the industry is still being felt to this day. We sat down with Tommy and asked him questions about his life, his industry brand, Chong's Choice, and and a ton more thanks to our awesome friends over at Green Bros, home of the world's premier harvesting solutions for the cannabis space. Thank you to them and their team for making this interview possible for us. And thank you for the guys over at CCTV who also helped make this interview possible for us. Take a look at our interview with Tommy Chung. First of all, thanks for having us. Your place You're is beautiful. Uh, you don't know this about me, but my dad grew up in the cannabis scene in the 70s and 80s and stuff like that. Uh, and so even me just sitting here with you would make him proud. He passed years ago, but uh, he'd be really proud. Oh, so this good. is a big moment. I, I appreciate it, man. Uh, pleasure. I've always said that I think entertainers and comics are the, some of the best entrepreneurs because you're managing your brand. Your brand is the company. Uh, now you've extended that to Chong's Choice. Yep. Uh, can you tell me about that? What's Chong's Choice about and, and those brands that you have? Well, Chong's Choice is... Uh brain fart from my son, I guess, and, and a really good friend of ours who lost his hearing. Due, he got shot in the chest. JP, he's a banker. And so he came up with this uh, system of us uh, using my name to uh, get the product from the growers, the best growers, and then getting them into the stores. We, we get the best. We were tied up with, a, we started off with another couple of guys, but then as soon as we got the, the publicity going, they, the guys started putting crappy weed into the stores. And we got complaints right away. And so we got, we got rid of those guys. And, and now uh, we're very proud to say that Chong's Choice is, is probably the best of the best. And you do a lot of the product testing, I'm sure, right? <laughs> some. Whenever you can. <laughs> no, I, I do some, but, 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 but the proof, the proof is in people wanting to buy it yeah. and, and the demand for it. Yeah. You know, there was uh, the band, what was, oh, the Bee Gees. One of the Bee Gees loved it so much, he, he was going back home, and this was when it was still illegal uh, for them, and he, he got about, I think, six ten thousand $10,000 worth you know, just so he could have Chong's Choice with him. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you obviously still have a lot of media projects going on. Cannabis Club TV is one of those. Yeah. Uh, what made you want to get involved with a project like Cannabis Club TV and, and Danny, who runs that? <laughs> well, the marijuana boat turned into a speed, speed boat. You know? <laughs> and, it's, and it's just going, going down the highway. I mean, pretty soon it'll be worldwide. Mm-hmm worldwide that's crazy and and there is so much potential yeah and so and with me being you know the one of the 
founders of the whole movement, uh, it's, it was just natural, you know, that we just capitalize on it. You know? And you are one of the founders. Yeah. Uh, take me back. I mean, this, the 70s and the 80s, cannabis was so counterculture yeah. and it's so non-mainstream. And then now in, in you know, the 2000 teens, it, it's working its way in to the mainstream. You see it on TV. You see celebrities doing it. Uh, what does that make? How does that make you feel to know that what you've done has really brought it into the mainstream? Well, it, it's kind of a mixed feeling. Uh, on one hand, you, 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 you know, I'm very proud to be part of it. But then, on the other hand, you can see the the tobacco companies and the cigarette companies and the and the people that were before putting out the poison. Yeah. Now they 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 want to get a hold of the marijuana, and. Uh, and, and big corporations are trying to separate themselves from the stoner image kind of thing. And, and that just makes me laugh because, you know, <laughs> hey, I don't need all the money. I just need a bit of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a bit more with industry legend Tommy Chong later in the show. Let's take a quick break and come back with our wine of the week. The next generation of automated dry trimmers has arrived. Completely redesigned, surgical grade stainless steel, hand trimmed quality results, gentler. With easier cleanup than ever before, this is the dry trimmer cultivators can depend on. Check out our complete lineup of harvesting equipment at greenbros.com. Welcome back into the show, where it's time for my favorite segment on Rooted TV, and that's Wine of the Week, where we take parts of everyday life that more mature people just gloss over, but not us, okay? We stand, and we fight, and we make everything a way bigger deal than it needs to be, which I'm sure will eventually get annoying, but until then, here we are, okay? My Wine of the Week this week is all about the media. Not the enemy of the people media, you hear 45 column, but the media that over sensationalizes every freaking news story that comes out of the newsroom. Now, I know you've seen these headlines that I'm talking about. They say something like, this person slammed someone over healthcare, or watch this politician get destroyed over whatever cause is hot that week. These freaking headlines drive me crazy because they're a million times more dramatic than they need to be, and they never live up to the hype. Never. Let alone the actual definition of the words used. No one's destroyed. What's happening? It's the same experience for me every time I read one of these stories, check on one of these articles, okay? I read the headline of the story or the video, and I'm like, oh baby, get the popcorn ready. This is going to be good. And then a minute in, I'm like, oh boy, here it comes. I can't wait. And then five minutes later, I'm like, okay, uh, it must just be right around the corner. I can see it coming. And then the video ends. And I'm like, wait, did I miss it? What happened? No one was destroyed, slammed, blasted, torched, or any other ridiculous word you put in your headline to try to drive traffic to your failing news platform. It's to the point now where all the news sources are doing is trying to compete with other news sources that are creating these crazy headlines and they're just doing it more and more and more and it's getting more and more ridiculous. If you can't drive traffic to your story with the headline that actually says what happens, then it's not a story. It's not news. Lying to us about what happens and making it seem like it's over the top is just bad journalism and that offends us because bad journalism is supposed to be our job. Stop taking our jobs! Stop it. In other news, make sure you stay tuned for our next episode where I absolutely eviscerate, destroy, and completely shame this vicious dog for attacking its owner. Here's a look. Or how about this clip, where another ferocious dog savagely beats its owner to death? Right? Weird examples, but examples nonetheless. I think we're all on board with the fact that these ridiculous, sensationalized headlines need to stop, and we politely ask all the news sources out there to stop it. Okay? You're super annoying. So. Do you want to share what you dislike about the way that the current news is being reported, or do you have another Wine of the Week topic for yourself? Hit us up at Stay Rooted on Twitter, and we'll try to get it in a future show. We love complaining, so shoot us your idea, and maybe it'll make it on the show. We'll be right back. 
After two years of intense R&D, Green Bros is finally ready to release the Dry Trimmer M to market. Completely redesigned, food-safe stainless steel, and easier cleanup than ever before make it clear. This is the dry trimmer cultivators can depend on. The new Model M dry trimmer produces 8 to 12 pounds per hour with hand trim quality results. Our patented blade design and gentle rolling action provide you with your preferred finish while protecting purity, potency, and the natural curves of your flower. Controlling your trimming process has never been easier with our automatic shutoff timer, forward reverse switch, master start stop switch, and adjustable speed settings. Green Bros is a veteran-owned company, and every Green Bros machine is manufactured right here in the USA. All of our machines are backed by our one-year manufacturer's warranty. Check out our complete lineup of harvesting equipment at greenbros.com. Welcome back into the show. Earlier, we showed you part of our interview with cannabis industry legend Tommy Chong, brought to you by our awesome friends over at Green Bros, home of the world's leading cannabis harvesting solutions. Check them out, greenbros.com. Let's jump right back into that interview with Tommy Chong. When you look back after all these years, uh, what would you say has the, been the hardest part of being Tommy Chong for this whole time? It's a high stress job, it has to be. Well, yeah, there's nothing hard about being Tommy Chong. Because, <laughs> uh, see, because I'm not that talented. <laughs> I, I, I swear to God, I'm not. And that's been my talent. Mm -hmm. See, I wasn't a good enough guitar player to become a poor ass musician. You know, because <laughs> I've known the best guitar players in the world and, and they sleep on people's, you know, friends' couches. Yeah. You know, they live off a girlfriend. Music, music does not pay well. You know, unless you write, write it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't the best songwriter, or else I'd be writing, 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 and then people forgetting, forgetting, forgetting. And I was never the best actor, never the best comedian, never the best anything, really. But I was the best Tommy Chong. And we performed in, uh, in Moncton, New Brunswick, just last week, or a couple of days ago. And I was singing a song, I got my, it was, it was a solo act, just me. And my wife, she introduced me, and then I'm up there alone with my guitar. And so I sang the one song that I, you know, you know this is funny and it works. Then I, st then I learned this other song um, uh, that they sang in uh, Stars Born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, Maybe it's time to let the old ways die. And so I, I started singing that, you know, and it came out really good, and all of a sudden I couldn't remember the change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So I'm in the middle of the song, and next thing you know, I'm hitting these bad chords, and I'm like searching for the for the change, and 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 it was, I'm a comedian. People probably thought it was on purpose. They they did. <laughs> they laughed. They loved it. Man, they loved it. I'm, and I'm laughing at myself because that's that that that's the Tommy Chong. Yeah. See, that's the Tommy Chong because I don't know what it is. But there's something guiding me, or some power that's guiding me, because all the, <laughs> like I got fired, I end up with Cheech. You know, there's all these things that just coming together. And we did a movie, our first movie we ever did, it, worldwide, it yeah. went huge, it, went, it was crazy, it's still a cult movie. And we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. We just knew how to be funny. And we, and we inspired so many people with our, our albums and that. And then we never wrote anything. We went in, smoked a joint, went in and, and sat around, looked at each other, started thinking of funny shit to do. And next thing you know, we got worldwide uh, uh, attention. Yeah. And it's crazy. I, it doesn't matter where I go. I was in, in Buenos Aires. No, I was in uh, Budapest. I'm walking down the street, next thing you know, I got a kid running up and he, he says, it's you, it's you, it's really you. He stops me and, <laughs> and he says, oh man, I saw you and, and I wasn't sure and then I had to run back home and I looked at and it was you and I ran back and, wow. and I'm looking at the little guy and he, will you take a picture, you know? Man. And I get that everywhere I go. And so, so being Tommy Chong is, is such a treat and, and I'm, uh, at that point where I've, I've never felt entitled. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, if anything, that's, I think that's one of my strengths because you, you get this feel, well, like this, like this house. Mm -hmm. It's my house, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> because I just, she, she, my wife, Shelby, decorates it. And, you know, she, she found she, it. She lets you live here. That's nice. Yeah. And that's about <laughs> it. That's about it. But, but I think my, my genius is being able to attract good people yeah. that help me get to where I'm going. Uh, you know, Tommy, I, I've heard you a bunch of times in a couple of different interviews uh, use the word integrity as uh, oh, yeah. something that you love. Why, why do you think when people ask you like about words that define you, integrity is one of the first words you think of? Well, integrity is the only thing that you leave yeah. with. You know, if you've got integrity, it doesn't matter what you've done in your life. You know, Nelson Mandela was probably one of my heroes because here's a guy he got. He spent, what, 18 years in a South African prison breaking rocks? And he found time to teach a course and teach people English and teach while breaking his quota of rocks. It's that kind, that's a kind of integrity, you know. And, and, and that's all you need, you know. When people give you their word, you know, you believe them. That's why with me, I, I always, I believe people. Because I want to believe him, you know, and and the, the the curse of a liar is that they can't believe anybody. If 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 you always have truth with you, then everything you if every, no matter where you are or what you're doing, you are a rock. You you are someone that people will respect, you know, yeah. and and to me that's more important than trying to be liked. Because nothing worse than someone trying to be liked, you know. That's why it doesn't matter how weird or how messed up the truth is. It's the best thing to hang on to. Big time thanks to Tommy Chong for being absolutely amazing to us. More than gracious with his time and a complete blast to hang out with. Don't forget to check out his curated line of cannabis products at chongschoice.us. Also check out the Tommy Chong app wherever you get your apps. I don't know where you get your apps, but go to your app place and get the Tommy Chong app. Tommy goes live all the time and talks directly with his fans, telling stories, answering questions, and airing out whatever he's thinking about that day. Aren't you curious? Don't you want to know? I've jumped on a couple of times and it's pretty awesome to be able to interact with a guy like Tommy just on your phone from the comfort of your house. It's nuts. Also, don't forget to check out the Rooted Podcast for great featured interviews every week, including our full interview with Tommy Chung. Uh, there's a ton we didn't show you in this episode, so check out the podcast. It's like 40 minutes, 45 minutes for all the stuff that didn't make it into the show, okay? And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming featured episode with entertainment legend Jim Belushi. How cool is that? Go check it out. Uh, you can find the Rooted Podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or StayRooted.com. And the full video versions of these interviews are up on our YouTube page, which is linked on our website, StayRooted.com, as well. Okay, before we say goodbye, we want to share with you our favorite and least favorite things of the week. Let's kick it off in a positive way as famed cannabis enthusiast and former prison inmate Martha Stewart is partnering up with Canadian cannabis company Canopy Growth. How's that for alliteration and a tongue twister, right? Uh, to produce a new line of CBD products with the flagship product for the brand being developed for the pet wellness market, right? Pets are on the come up. Okay, uh, I'm sure cannabis enthusiast and former prison inmate isn't the best way to introduce her, but both are true, so it works, right? Of course, she's known for a million other things, but this is the show marketed to your average cannabis consumer, so we figured that we would lead with that street cred. Martha Stewart smoking with Snoop Dogg, right? Plus, I doubt many of you are on the Martha Stewart Living Magazine subscription list, so I don't know how you would have heard about this. And she speaks directly to a huge audience who are most likely not cannabis or CBD savvy, so she could be a great ambassador for the industry to a crowd that we're not currently speaking to as a whole. Plus, we love our pets, and if her new line of CBD products uh, for pets 
make your pet healthier, maybe live longer, or just have a better life. We're all about it, and we love this story. Welcome in, Martha. Have fun. Now for something that we don't like. As earlier this month, a handful of federal agencies and agents testified before Congress on the status of hemp and CBD and when they expect to have rules and regulations in place at the federal level. With the gist of the testimony from the FDA and USDA representatives kind of sounding like a dad snapping at his kid when the kid asks if dinner's ready and the dad's already making it, and the kid's like, Dad! When's the new CBD regulatory system gonna be ready? I'm hungry. And the dad's like, I'm working on it. Can't you see I'm making it? Calm down, it's ready when it's ready. But seriously, the USDA hopes to have uh, their regulations in place by 2020. The FDA rep said it could take as many as four years to get their system to regulate CBD in place. Four years. You guys aren't painting the Mona Lisa here, guys. Let's move it faster. It's just a multi-billion dollar industry that's eagerly awaiting your rules and regulations. And we're sure you're just going to mess it up anyways, so let's go. Put something out there. Huh. All in all, it's your typical hurry up and wait scenario. And while many of you may have tuned in to the hearings to hear some good news like I did. No, oh, I didn't. I don't watch that. All you got was the proverbial kicking of the can down the road and no real answers. Burr. Ending on a positive note, because spreading positivity is what it's all about. By the way, go out and do something positive for someone today, okay? That's your homework assignment. A group of scientists just announced that they have genetically modified brewer's yeast, whose scientific name I'll throw up on the TV because I can't pronounce it. No idea. But it's what turns grain into beer and dough into bread, so it sounds important. Anyways, without getting too nerdy on the show, these scientists are messing around with gene sequences that eventually allow them to synthesize chemicals into cannabinoids like CBD and THC, along with other cannabinoids they're trying to find. These researchers are attempting to extract the most rare cannabinoids from this process in an effort to more easily study the effects and major medical benefits of those cannabinoids, which could eventually lead to huge scientific breakthroughs on the medicinal side of cannabis research, all without having to grow cannabis. How cool is that? Now, the parts of this that I can understand all sound super cool. I mean, I don't know how people come up with this stuff, but I'm all for it, and that's why it made the favorite list this week. Yay, science! Right? Those are our favorite and least favorite things of the week. Which one do you like or dislike the most, or do you want to share your favorite thing with us? Go ahead, hit us up uh, on Twitter, at StayRooted. Let us know your thoughts. Maybe we'll share them in a future episode, okay? That's gonna do it for us on the show this week. Big thanks to our friends over at Cannabis Club TV for continuing to air our show, as well as helping to link us up with Tommy Chong and his manager, JP. Both awesome people, and we're psyched to have done this interview, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Go check out the podcast for the full interview. Also, big thanks to our friends over at Green Bros, home of the world's premier harvesting solutions for the cannabis space. Okay, go check them out, greenbros.com. There are interview sponsors for the show and part of the team that's responsible for bringing you the awesome interview with Tommy that we just aired and the awesome interview with Jim Belushi that will air on our next show. So stay tuned. Also, big thanks to High Times TV to, uh, for continuing to air our content, okay? It's gonna do it for us on the show. My name's been Tim Strombo and I'll remind you one more time to work hard, be humble, and stay rooted. We'll see you next week, everybody. <laughs>